next question is really, you know, beyond tracking them, I, I'm, a, I'm a good project manager, so I'm, I'm really familiar with the change order log, but it, it, there's, there's more to presenting changes than just tracking them on a log and, and throwing them over the fence. Uh, it's, it's really also about how, how you shape them, how you present them, and I, I got to believe it that you know, this design development stage where you're, you know, you're forming the project, that that becomes a really, really critical point. Uh, what are some tips and tricks that you, you've used kind of beyond the tracking mechanisms? Well, you know, the, the contractor has to spend enough quality time with the owner to make sure the owner understands that probably they're over budget day one. Um, the contractors that are all happy and everything's good at the beginning, um, I always told my team don't do that. Go in and give them the bad news first. Owners hate bad news late. Owners do not mind at the beginning of a design process to realize that they might have to give up something to get, make sure they get one of their sacred cows that they want. And they don't consider that a change order. They consider that just the design process and managing the budget, and they're okay with it. What they hate are change orders during the project. That, that's what they hate. That, that, that's what they are doing this whole process for, is to minimize change orders during the project. So I think more than anything, you know, that, that was the reason I would use that roadmap form, is they knew all the time where the budget was. If it was over the budget from where they started, they had a roadmap of how to get it down if they wanted to. And I was turning the tables to a certain extent. If the owner wanted the project to meet the budget, that he had to make decisions to allow that to happen. If he rejected all of our ideas, then I couldn't really be held responsible because I gave him the roadmap to get it within the budget.